Hi, it's Wesley with 22 Zines. I feel like it's been kind of a while and I've had a lot of ideas for things that I've wanted to share or videos I wanted to make and um, the thing is I haven't been completing a lot of things to a full extent lately. Um, I feel like I have been pretty creative and I've been doing a whole bunch of stuff and I'm actually really proud of a lot of the stuff that I've been doing. It's just not exactly the sort of thing that's super presentable. So my solution is this is going to be my work in progress roundup where I'm just showing off all of the works in progress and just like one-off things that are kind of too small or too short for me to justify filming a whole video. I mean, I know you can make short videos and whatever, but it's just like such a hassle to get all the files up from my phone to my computer and edit and upload and whatever. So that's why I don't usually bother just doing like snippet videos. Um, yeah, so it's going to be just kind of like uh, show and tell, sharing what stuff I've been up to lately and hopefully, you know, the, the grand goal or whatever is that in doing this, it will um, encourage me and hopefully encourage um, the you and the world at large to um, share things even when they aren't presentable, you know? <laughs> share share things that you've been up to. Um, I just got a new beanbag chair literally like a few days ago and it, um, I say new as though I had one before. I got my very first beanbag chair ever and I'm really excited because I got the same brand that the teen room that I work at in the library has and they're like the best beanbag chairs ever until finally I was just like, you know, fuck, I really just want to have one of these and it's super good. Um, so here's kind of the top of it and so if you hear like the beans shifting around it's because of the beanbag chair. Um, it's from a company called Yogi Bo. Um, it's, I guess it's not like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how expensive beanbag chairs normally are, but I got mine for a really good price. Um, and I'm just happy to have it. It's like really, it's a really good chair to like chair, <laughs> whatever. It's a really good spot to sit and read in. Um, because you can adjust, like that's the problem is when you're sitting and you're reading for an extended period of time, then you can't really adjust your position at all. <laughs> um, but the nice thing about having a beanbag chair and this one in particular is it adjusts really comfortably and w really well. But once you're in a position, it's like stable enough that you can actually stay there. It doesn't feel like it's just loose, nothing supporting you. Um, anyway, so I'm really excited about it. <laughs> and so I've been sitting in it to like get it to loosen up a little bit and so that's what I'm going to be sitting in. <laughs> um, okay, I guess we'll start with this. I just got like a big pile of stuff here. Um, so one thing that I've kind of been thinking about lately is just planning and I went through at the, around the uh, beginning of the year, you know, I went through all of those videos of people setting up their bullet journals or their planner setups and, you know, I love all that I love watching that sort of thing because it's just like watching journals and watching notebooks and watching sketchbooks. I love any, any of that, you know, watching people put things on paper. Um, and so the, the thing that I kind of wanted to make a video on about it, but just never got around to it, um, is that I have kind of a big problem planning. Um, and specifically like using a planner. I don't have a problem coming up with goals or ideas or whatever. But it feels like I've never really been able to commit to a planner. And I don't even mean like a planning system. I mean that the very experience or the very idea of, of like keeping, keeping notes, noting when I'm going to do certain things, even writing down appointments that have fixed times. Um, I just, the whole thing is very uncomfortable for me. And I think a lot of that is just because um, having depression, sometimes there are moments when, you know, there are days that I'll just like get up and I just won't, I'll just be depressed. I just won't have any energy and I'll have to really adjust my expectations. And it just feels like anything that I write down um, becomes kind of a... a 
a failure if I don't live up to it. And I don't know, it's even more complex than that. It's not even just that. It's something about like how adjusting commitments that I'm making to other people and it, how it relates to like writing things down and like trying to do certain goals. Um, I don't know. It's like, it's a whole big thing. And I would have had to really parse it all out into like an easily presentable format um, <laughs> to bother to talk about it, which I didn't really want to do. But um, I will share kind of my outcome or what I've been doing with it, which is uh, my, my attempt now is that I got a planner that hopefully take some of the pressure off and that is the uh slingshot organizer this comes in a few different ways this is like the small um uh perfect bound one and it also comes in like a you know half letter size with spirals like maybe i don't remember what the other binding is but i got this little one and it's a the slingshot slingshot is like a it's called the Slingshot Collective, and they do a sort of um, community newspaper slash zine uh, slash arts thing in Berkeley, California every month. Um, and I always really liked picking that up and reading it when I lived there. And so I thought, it's like, okay, maybe trying to get this vibe. It's also very, it's very like, um, anti-capitalist and it's very much about, you know, organizing for, um, for protests, organizing for justice, that sort of thing. Um, that's sort of like the theme and, um, that's, that's, anyway. So my idea was that I would try to, um, really put my stamp on this and make it feel like something that I wouldn't want to leave the house without, um, and make it feel more personal to me and just make it feel something useful and sort of friendly and like approachable and, and inv invigorating, encouraging, um, rather than here's a big list of all of my obligations, <laughs> you know? So what I did is I made this little, thing, like this little folder thing on the inside cover. Um, and on the inside, I've got two little pockets. This is just some stickers, just because I kind of didn't know what to put in there. These are, you know, my stickers that I've made. There's sort of a story behind these, but I'll save that for another time. Um, and that just goes behind Bulma here. And then back here, I just made some, like, business cards <laughs> for my website because, you know, sometimes I meet people out and about and so we talk about tarot or zines or whatever and I want to send them, you know, someplace. And so I just like made these for my, what? Made these things that have my website on them just out of like cut cardstock. So I'm sticking these in here as well, just to have those around. Um, I also made, like, I glued in this little black ribbon as a bookmark thingy, and in the back I also made an, I, you know, attached a paper clip in case I need it. I have this, usually I just have some, like, scratch paper stuck in here, um, but I need to cut some more to size. I wrote a few goals that I had, um, have, I suppose, for this year. Um, and I suppose it's still sort of doable. I've already kind of fallen behind on some of them, and, and that means I think I need to readjust. Um, and then on the back, I just put this sticker that was uh, sent to me by a zine friend uh, because the back had, like, this weird banana thing on it that I didn't like. And so I just put this on the back instead. Uh, yeah. And how this has worked... There have been a few things that have definitely been useful in this. Um, I guess I'll just like flip through it real quick is that it starts off with, it has like a, um, it has a menstrual calendar. It has a year at a glance page. It's got a few pages of like monthly, um, whatever month calendars. And then it has, all of the daily pages as like a week at a time spread. 
and they've got all these little doodly bits, and it's really sketchy and fun. Uh, it also has, like, uh, sort of activist history for each day alongside whatever normal holidays and things you'd see. So, like, um, what day is it today? Saturday the 21st, it says, 1801, mysterious fire sweeps the offices of, de- of the Department of Treasury. This is U.S.-based, so that's going to be about that. But anyway, so it's like, oh, that's interesting. And it also has, like, the moon. It has the new moon and the full moon and then a few other things. So, like, 2023 new moon, 1253 uh, in Pacific Standard Time. So I guess that's... hmm, I guess it's, like, in an hour (laughs) when I'm filming this. Interesting. And then it has, like, the Lunar New Year, um, that sort of thing. And... Um... I haven't I I I haven't fully used this yet. Like I I haven't written down the things that I was planning on doing. I have a few things where I, you know, did write down some notes and cross some things off when I finished them and I just I had like a to-do list here around the end of the year um last year but I still haven't totally figured out my how I'm going to incorporate this in a way that feels supportive and not depressive or, or overwhelming. But just at least aesthetically, and at least the general vibe, I think, is working. So now it sounds like the second step that I'm going to have to do is a lot more inner work, which is a giant pain in the ass. <laughs> and I don't want to do that, but I guess I, you know, really kind of have to do that. Anyway, so that's my, that's my planning setup. Let's see, I just have kind of like a big pile of stuff here. This next thing, uh, this is kind of old. This is actually quite a few months old, but I'm, I'm really proud of it. And I guess I have been meaning to scan it or do a video or something and I've just never quite known what to do. Um, but here it is. It's basically just like this little one page on a half sheet, um, collage. And I picked out it for the background. I just picked out all of my favorite court cards and took, uh, you know, arranged them, took a picture and then printed it. And then this is sort of a, a poem text that I glued on top of it. And the, the poem is, just something slightly edited from my journal called, um, if I can get it to focus, focus, whatever. Um, it's called my love letter to the court cards. And so it's like to the court cards and tarot, um, because I've always really liked the court cards and I think that they're some of the most engaging and interesting aspects of the tarot and kind of part of my favorite part of most decks. And, um, I think a lot of people have difficulty with them and there's sort of this general notion, I guess, that they're, uh, I don't know. They're very strange, but I just, I guess I was just thinking like, you know, I really, I really like the strangeness and I, I wrote this poem about it. Oh my god, am I seriously gonna... Am I thinking about reading this poem out loud right now? Um... Okay, fine. Fine! I can't, like, bring it up and then not share it, right? <laughs> so I guess this is my encouragement to finally scan scan this and put it up so that you can, like, read it. Um, but anyway, it goes... My love letter to the court cards. You are the true gothic cards. Misunderstood, deep, mysterious, disliked. They're afraid of you, afraid of the fact that you do not bend, that you do not reduce yourself for consumption. Of course not. You know your own value. Of course not. You are rooted in royalty. You are everyone. You are the readers and the non-readers, the friends and the strangers, the self and the other. And still you have unique hearts. You retain your true values. You know who you are and what is truly yours. You contain everything the other cards contain and more, just as we do. You are forever changing, gaining what deepens you and losing that which keeps you thin. You have burst forth from the limits of appearances and from even the limits of name. What's next for you? Will you transcend the limits of your suits? You are balanced and connected with the map of the self. 
You are like the most human gods, with your own houses and domains, and flaws and tensions, and strengths and loves. And yet, you are still each of us. You are the very stars and seasons. You are all and none of us, my deepest friends for whom I hold a tender respect. Okay. <laughs> um, sort of along this, like, collage line, there's a few things that I've been doing, like, here and there of, like, um, collages that are inspired by some of my um, uh, birth chart things, and I don't really have a plan for them, <laughs> so I'll just show you what I have so far. Like, um, sort of, they're, they're sort of meant to be, like, how I relate to each... Um, each sign, I guess, like what's based on what is in the sign, what house the sign is in, that sort of thing. And so I have three so far, and I don't know if or when I'll keep going with them, but you know, here's what I have. So this is Capricorn, and this is the first one that I did. Um, and it says, from the Mr. Capricorn, how do I look? Um, and on the bottom here, it's probably hard to see, but it says, smart, punk, do I look capable? And the idea is that Capricorn is my rising sign, and um, it's sort of about um, how Capricorn being very grounded and being very ambitious and, and sort of other-oriented in a way. It seems to be wanting to project a certain image of confidence and a certain image of... Um, competence and so that's kind of what this is inspired by um next i've got let's see what was the next one i did i think this was the next one i did and this is for aquarius which i don't have any signs in aquarius um or i'm sorry i don't have any planets in aquarius uh so it's kind of just based on the house that aquarius falls in for me which um I just think, yeah, this kind of, it kind of, it, uh, I'm not going to go into every single thing that I've been thinking about, about it, but I'll just read what it says. It says, keep up hope, Aquarian house, even outsiders deserve a home. Um, and I guess it's just, it just in general, it's kind of about, um, my, uh, tendency to want to um, establish a comfortable resting place and, and find my people um, and just be comfortable around other people. I don't know. It's just, it's just, these are, these are kind of loose, loose fluid collage thingies. Um, and then the last one that I have so far is Taurus and um, it's kind of talking about how Taurus is such like a friendly and stable uh, sign in general, and based on its placement, you'd think that I'd have a very comfortable um, sort of supportive home life, and then I didn't just based on my family members, and so this is the, the only text on this one is, where were you, Taurus? And this is the collage for that. And so, you know, I tried to make it very structured and have it be very gray as sort of like a, you know, wishing nostalgic thing, um, you know, with like the desire in the middle and then sort of the, the grayness on the outside. Anyway, like, <laughs> so I got just these little, like, these little birth chart collages and I might keep going with them. I might not. It'd be cool to put them all together in a zine, but that means doing more of them. So like I said, work in progress roundup. Um, okay. <laughs> so the, the next, the other thing that I really got into for a little while and that I, I'm still interested in, but you know, that I, I did a whole bunch of was making, uh, journals, like binding books and, um, paper journals and that sort of thing. So, uh, this just real quick, <laughs> like, I really don't know what I'm going to do with this, but I have like these, uh, two cards this is from, like, a greeting card, and this is also from a greeting card that I cut down to size, and I just really like the idea of making this little 
folio thing. I don't know what this is going to be. I don't know if it's going to be like a collage artsy thing. I don't know if it's going to be more of a folder. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with this, but I really like how it looks. <laughs> I want to I wanna do something with it, so there's that. <laughs> Whatever. Like I said, you know, <laughs> some of these works in progress have had a little more work done and some of them a little less. Um, but then along along the more uh, bookbindy uh, thing, I made this cover for this little journal that I wanted to do like sort of a satanic pop punk thing. And again, like I, I talk about making a journal, but I don't really know what's going to go in it or if I'm actually going to write in it or if I want to do anything with it. But I made the cover for it at least. Um, and this inside, it says... I want you for my undead army. And this is a little, a little folder. Um, and then over here is another little folder. And, uh, this is just like a card from, a the, uh, whatever. Uh, what the hell is it called? I literally have the occult demon fucking, I don't, give a shit. Whatever. From, from a, a like, demon tarot that was super cheap and, and kind of shitty, but you know, looks kind of cool in here. So I got that. And let me see if I can... I did not organize these in a good way. Okay, and then this is like the one that kind of got the most finished, um, which is a little notebook that I'm really happy with how it turned out. I really just wanted to use this paper. Um, and so it's just like a thin little notebook. It's bound on one side. It has a pocket because this was originally an envelope that I um, took it apart, turned it inside out, and then put it on here. So this is like this, the you know closure of the envelope. This is just like some cardstock to kind of make it more of a cover, like sturdier. Um, so there's a pocket in there. And then just like some random pieces of paper. Some of them I tea dyed myself um, just because I... You know, this is just like sketchbook paper that I tea dyed. Some of these are left over from cards, like this one. Some of them are glued down. This is from like a um, tea bag. Um, I got this from like a German um, almanac. I got some maps and, uh, you know, just like dragon paper. Just a bunch of paper that I thought looked nice together and was kind of the right color tone and then it's exactly the same on the back so you could probably you know do it either way and again like oh and here's the inside binding it's just like this pretty little knot <laughs> um so i really like this and i kind of i mean that's the thing it's like i'm i'm very happy to be doing some of these things just to like get the, some creative expression out but do you ever feel like that where you you make something and then you just kind of don't know what to do with it like, I don't, I don't sell a lot of stuff. I could try, but like, I don't know. Like, I mean, I, I guess I could, but I don't know. Selling just is weird. I really wish that I had more friends that I could just like give this random stuff to. Like, cause I don't want to I, I don't know what to do with it. Now I just have this here. And it's like, yeah, I could write in it. I don't want to. Like, I need to I need to find somebody to send this to. If that somebody is you, if you're like, oh, man, that's the coolest shit, and I need that for this would be perfect to write this or that in, so fucking just drop me a comment or an email, and I'll totally send it to you. That's kind of how I feel about a lot of this stuff. Is like, okay, so I've made it. Now what? Am I going to, like... I mean, I could put it up for decoration. I got plenty. Oh, sh sh I got, I got plenty of decorations already. Um, you know, I don't want to just hang up everything. So I don't know. Whatever. I'm not gonna get too much into it. Um, and then the last little thing from that era, I guess, is I just made these little like book plate nameplate kind of things. Um, with some random ephemera that I've had, and this was sent to me in sort of an art journal, art supply trade that I did, which was really fun. And it's like a little, uh, it's like a little paperclip. Um, so yeah, just made like this little, this little thing. 
covered in paper, put a spider on it. Like, <laughs> don't know what I'll do with it, but I like how it turned out. And uh, this is sort of a matching one that just has my initials on it, WS. And this guy... Like these, I use these stickers that are just like so tiny that I would, I don't really think I would ever use them for anything else. Um, and I just made them into these little whatevers, book plates. Yeah. Um, let's see. Do I want to get into that right now? All right, we'll do this. Um, so the main thing that I've been working on for a while and the thing that I feel really guilty about, honestly, is that I've been working on my next uh, Unfair Maiden zine, which is my Purr zine, and I'm happy with how it's turning out, but, like, I was, like, pumping it out, and then I just hit a fucking wall. <laughs> and I feel really bad because I hit this wall after I had asked my friend Nina at Echo Zines to do the cover, and Nina sent me the cover literally, like... Oh god. <laughs> like six weeks ago now. More than that, maybe? Uh, like, I'm so embarrassed. And I just haven't had it together enough to, like, respond and tell her what a fucking incredible cover is. It's a really, really good cover. It's so cool. It's so rad. It's so punk. And I just have not responded. <laughs> and I feel super bad and especially because Nina's like seen some of my other videos and posts and stuff and commented on it and I just have not been good about responding to comments and responding to Nina in particular. So Nina like if you see this before I actually respond to um your email about the cover just know that it's so good. I really really love it and I'm so sorry that it's taking me so long. I know that you get it because you're rad and you're awesome but like you know really I'm I'm really sorry about it. <laughs> but for the rest of you who aren't Nina <laughs> I'll just show you what I got. This is um this is my zine so far. This is the Riot Girl issue. And so what I really wanted to do with this one was to try and loosen up. And so I did a lot of um, handwriting in this one as opposed to uh, text. I did some uh, like printed text, but you know, I did that. This is also before I had my printer set up. So like, <laughs> I just didn't, I couldn't really text, you know, type stuff. So I've got just some collaging pages. This is just like an intro. I've got this big giant list, an ongoing Riot Girl playlist. This was the funnest part. This was the best part of this whole zine, putting it together. And this is like the whole essence of this zine, like almost why I wanted to make it, which is just a whole bunch of songs and bands um, of Riot Girl songs that I really, really love. And some of them, like, I'll, I'll just say what it says down here. It says like, I know it's not all technically Riot Girl, but you know, who cares? Deal with it. Um, big fun playlist. So it was really fun going through and like trying to pick out, okay, so I definitely want something from this band, but which song do I want to include on this list from this particular band? Because I tried to have like a big variety of bands in here. And so I think there's only like two or three bands that have multiple songs on this list. Um, I think, yeah, that's about right. Anyway, so that was really fun to make. Um, this is just like a per whoop, persing like, story titled, I'm embarrassed, can I still be a riot girl? <laughs> About, like, this time that I accidentally wore shorts that are too short. Um, this, uh, things are f fucking falling apart, because it's all just cardstock folded, it's not, like, stapled or anything together yet. Um, this, this part, We're Not Back, is basically about this just... It's just this giant rant about how so many people are, like, I don't know, viewing punk and DIY and Riot Girl and zines and a lot of this stuff as, like, a trend. Um, that it's, like, that it's back from the 80s or 90s or that it's, like, I don't know. It's, you can you can read about it in here once I finally finish this scene. <laughs> Um, I've got this cover, this, this interior, which also serves as, like, a cool way to show something off. Um, this is my punk jacket. Um, and so I made this whole inner spread just kind of talking about the jacket and when I made it, and, um, the main phrase on it is, I'm such a rebel girl, I'm a boy, with the trans symbol, and I painted that on the back. <laughs> I 
really... <laughs> I'm honestly still kind of proud of myself for coming up with that one. I think it's like... <laughs> I just think it's clever. Um, I wrote my own Riot Girl song inspired by Holly Cassio. Um, and what else do I have? I've got this whole part of uh, nudity, heads up. I've got this whole part on Tank Girl, which I have a lot more text that I have written. I just haven't like printed it out and arranged it. Um, this very big, long thing on Tank Girl and all the sort of highs and lows of Tank Girl. And that's what I have so far. I've got a few pages left here. Um, obviously, I want to leave some as, like, an interview space for Nina, because I always like to have, like, a little page about the artist of the covers. And, yeah, so that's what I've been working on. And so I worked on that zine, uh, Unfair Maiden 4, for, like, uh, I don't know, like, two weeks straight. Almost finished the whole thing, and I have not touched it in, like, a month. <laughs> Like, I've tried to, and it just has not come together. So all I can say is it must be because it's number four, and four is, like, an unlucky number or something, because it is not coming together. <laughs> but it will. It always does. Um, let me tell you this little story, actually, of, like, part of the reason why I really want to do this sort of work-in-progress roundup and, and why completion, I think, is, is not the most important thing about um, creative expression so let me preface this by saying my grandma is a fucking awesome lady or was she still is but you know she's passed on now <laughs> and she was incredibly creative incredibly independent just very strong like confident person she like she grew up in alaska she uh <laughs> played piano in east germany she uh married a gay man so that he could, uh, like, as a, as a beard, um, <laughs> she, uh, is, she was, like, a, a, an opera pianist, and she, she's just, like, this really, really cool, and she's a librarian, really cool lady, um, and I was living with her for a while in my young adulthood, and, um, there were a lot of little doodles and things that I had made, and I love her, but, Frankly, this probably messed me up a little bit. <laughs> of she was always constantly trying to push me to finish something and/or monetize something, and I see where this is coming from because my grandma was in a creative profession, and all of her most of her money was coming from whatever she could generate for herself. Um, in terms, like she didn't have a steady job or whatever. It was always like she had to go out and um, either you know, make connections with people or audition places when she was younger and that sort of thing. So I totally get why she had this hustling attitude. Um, but it was really frustrating because there were a lot of things that I made it and I was done with it and I was totally happy with it. And I was just like, you know, I like this idea. Maybe I'll work with it more later. Maybe I won't. Um, and she was always kind of pushing me to be like, oh, you should totally do something with this. And I know that was her way of, of, complimenting where she's saying was like you should sell this because people would buy it and that's her way of saying like this is qual this is cool enough this is good enough that people would pay money for it so you should try to get money for it um but it was always really frustrating because then it's like well what if i don't want to like what if i want to move on to the next thing like don't want i don't you know you know what i mean <laughs> so um <sighs> And frankly, I still kind of have that issue with a lot of these things where I'm asking you, like, what am I going to do with it? It's like, you don't have to do anything with it. It can find a new home. You can, you know, you don't have to go into trying to make out, make books with the idea that you're going to, you know, open up a store on Etsy. <laughs> you don't have to open a store on Etsy for everything. I mean, fuck Etsy. There's a lot of stuff there, but anyway, um... Yeah, so I figure, if anything, like, I can just sort of show off all the works in progress here. And just because I haven't finished an idea or haven't, you know, gotten, made enough of something to make it presentable and sellable, like, um, I can still do, I can still show it off. I can do, like, a show and tell thing, and it can still be fun, and it can still be rewarding in itself. And also, also... Just because you haven't 
totally finished something yet doesn't mean that the experience won't be valuable and doesn't mean that you won't be able to pick up the idea and do more stuff with it later. You know, I've got ideas for comics that took me years and years to develop and some of them I finished and some of them I have not finished and some of them I'll pick up and some of them I won't. And that's why you need having this bank of ideas is a really good thing. You don't have to finish everything and then have to click come up with the next thing that you get from start to finish with it. All right, little rant over. It's getting a little long. I still got some more stuff, so let's keep going. Um, I've got a few more little collages, and um, these are just sort of like random ideas where I've just been going through my ephemera and had something that I've always wanted to do something with and then finally finished it. Um, I'm really happy with this one. <laughs> it says, Rachel has a secret. And this is a um, book cover from some old vintage teen romance novel or something that I literally found on the street. Like, it had fallen out of someone's trash, and so you can totally still see all the texture from the asphalt. And so I saw it, and, like, she's holding this letter that has these rainbow hearts, and so naturally, I see this girl holding a letter with rainbow hearts from a book titled Rachel Has a Secret, and the very first thing that pops in my head is just like, she's fucking gay! She's a lesbian! That's awesome! Uh, naturally, like, this book is from the 80s. It's not about that. It's a mass market teen romance. They don't have lesbian ones back then. I mean, that's not entirely true, but you know. Uh, it's not, the book itself is not lesbian, but I made the cover more lesbian. I just, like, added some things and used a bunch of pretty pearly things and this little cat sticker and made a little uh, collage that now I, you know, <laughs> don't have anything to do with it. But I was like, yeah, this is, this is like the vision of what I, what I wanted to do with this book cover when I picked it up several months ago. So I'm very happy with that. Um, and then here's just like another little, I originally thought this could be like a journal card. I suppose it still could. Um, but, uh, all these little black and red stickers were just leftovers from a project that we had at the library. And so I took them home and like stuck them in this checkerboard pattern, realized I didn't have enough, decided it's like, okay, so I'll just make them janky and then added some more stuff. And this is one of those things that looked like super ugly, super bad. It looked like a, uh, you know, cheap diner menu for like the majority of the time until at some point, and I couldn't even tell you when, it just like clicked and it's like, oh, yeah, okay, this works. It actually looks kind of cool. <laughs> so that's that. Let's see what other collages... I have kind of a lot of little collages, because um, that's sort of the easiest thing for me to do when I'm not feeling up to something, uh, is, like, I want to do art, I don't know what, let's do a collage. Um, I've got this, it's sort of like a pair. Um, this is a magician collage, um, <laughs> and I just did this because I had this... Um, cut out Merlin illustration from a book that um, was, you know, destroyed, damaged, and so I was disseminating it and salvaging what images that I could from it, and I really wanted to use this one because it was on the exterior cover, and so the out this little part was sort of folding in on itself, and I was like, this isn't going to store well, I should just use it now, and that's how I ended up with, like, this... Um, magician thing and <laughs> used a few of these, you know, if, uh, images that I've had stored in my collage boxes for a long time and haven't known what to do with. And naturally when I made this, then I was like, okay, well, I want to make a high priestess version. Now, I am happy with how the magician version and the high priestess version turned out individually. I am not happy putting them together because it looks very gender binary putting them together when that's not really what I wanted to do with it. You know, I was trying to use like the, the boys <laughs> and, and part of intentionally why I'm misspelling it on purpose is, um, because I wanted it to be more of like more gen boys, the word boys in a gender neutral way, and I use the word girls in the other one, I want it to be like girls in a gender neutral way. Um, but I think when you put this next to the High Priestess one, it's like, oh, 
this looks like, (laughs) of course this looks like a gender binary. Um, So I don't entirely like them both next to each other, but, you know, individually I think they look kind of cool. And then here's the High Priestess one. Uh, Mystic Girls. I really, really like how I finally managed to use this cat, because I have had this cat in my, from an old comic, and I've just had it saved forever. I love this anime girl (laughs) who has been, again, from the back of a comic book. I think this is my, the psychic girl is what this figure is. She was an advertisement for another, another comic in this particular one. But anyway, so like, you know, I really like how this turned out. Originally it was meant to be kind of a companion piece, which is why I tried to use sort of a similar, you know, they both have the same font and they both have sort of a balance between stickers and um, glued images, and they both have a similar, you know, pattern, background, that sort of thing. But putting them next to each other, I was like, wait a second. This is looking really like the uh, toy section (laughs) of a Walmart or something, (laughs) being really divided like that. Um, Yeah, so... I'm not totally sure what I'll what I'll do with them, you know, I guess split them up. I don't know. But I made them and <laughs> I'm still pretty happy with how they turned out at least aesthetically, like that's nice, right? Um and speaking of collages, like Okay, so another thing that I tried to start doing, and one goal that fell by the wayside very quickly, was I decided that I was going to bite the bullet and finally make an Instagram account. And I had an Instagram account, but literally never checked it. I just had it um, to kind of, like, uh, save my username in case I ever wanted it. 22 zines. And so finally I was like, okay, I want to do something with this because it seems like there's so much cool zine stuff happening on Instagram, and I feel like I'm missing out for no good reason that I'm just being stubborn that I don't want to use Instagram. And so I was like, okay, well, what would I want to do on Instagram? And I was thinking that I really wanted to do some zine reviews, sort of um, like show off slash reviews, because it would be easier to do them on a consistent basis rather than having to film a whole video about it. And I made exactly, let's see, three (laughs) before I fucking gave up. Um... Like I said, I will probably come back to it, Um, but I guess the thing is, I just, I just really don't like Instagram. I don't like the vibe, and maybe it's just that I haven't really built up my community over there, but it just does not feel super uh, comfortable for me over there, or, or welcoming. I really hate the ads, and even just some of the comments on, like, the default uh, not default, but, like, the reels or whatever. First of all, I don't know how it works, but, like, you know, go through the reels or something, it recommends you one, or you just, like, end up on a reel that you didn't actively choose, and then it's full of just vitriolic hatred in all of the comments on it, and, you know, it just sort of shoots me back to that whole, like, well, it's your fault for looking at the comments, thing when it's like, how about we say that it's these people's fault for being assholes? Like, I don't know. I'm sure that part of that is just I need to curate my feed or whatever, and I know it's like I can always post on Instagram without necessarily, you know, looking at Instagram for other reasons, but I don't know. It just... It just soured me on the whole thing, and I guess, you know, I still want to (coughs) try... I guess, I I don't know, I'm just like super disappointed by the whole experience, which really sucks because so many people are using it that I know that they would want to, I know that, I know that it would, I know that other people would find it very convenient to be able to uh, follow me or contact me on Instagram or via Instagram and just see what I'm up to that way. But I guess I'm just feeling like, well, maybe I don't need to tailor to other people.
people. Like, maybe maybe that's their problem, and maybe the people who really want to find me would, you know, find me another way. But then I have all these things where it's like I kind of want to start a zine distro, and that would probably be easier on Instagram, so I don't know. It's just like a whole big stress mess. But, well, I was still thinking it was a good idea. I made this little collage um, just for zine reviews, and I just really like these images. And I had all of these strips of leftover paper from the journal making uh, activities um, that were just like really thin strips that I had cut off so that I could make them all a certain size. And so I was pretty proud of myself for thinking, hey, I could just like glue all these strips this way and make an interesting background for a different collage. <laughs> so there's there's that. I don't like how the how this turned out either. Um, but anyway. Oh, and this is uh, Urusai, <laughs> again, from the back of a manga. Alright. <coughs> Didn't really mean to end on, like, a downer for that. Um, but, luckily, I have a couple more things, so we're not ending on a downer. Um, one thing that I did that at the beginning of the year that I'm so happy I did is that uh, uh, creator Megan and the Moon did a uh, vision board workshop activity thing. <laughs> um, and I have kind of a complicated history with vision boards because it was something that was, my mom was really into and, you know, I mentioned all the time. But, like, if my mom had something to do with it, you can probably guess that it was kind of a shitty experience for me. But I kind of wanted to decide, to try and do it anyway, just as, like, a New Year's goal, New Year's resolution, and just, like, to make another fun collage thing. And so this is the vision board that I ended up making. Um, I'm really proud of this one. It's a USPS bunny. It says, defend public services against private greed. We've got cool goth chicks. We've got cool wizards. We've got zines. We've got bikes. Like, this is, you know... I guess I just ended up making this as, like, a vibe. And sort of the trick that Megan used was that you write your intentions and stuff on the board itself. This is just, like, the back of an old sketchbook. And so, like, I wrote it in Sharpie on the back of the board of the things that I wanted to do, the wa wanted to accomplish. Um, and you write it in present tense language. So you say, like, I am this. And I said, like, I am a badass <laughs> zine machine. I am a distro owner. I am this and that. Um, like, I am a I am a cool wizard. I, I am riding my bike places. And you write all that stuff on the back, and then you collage over it with images that evoke that. Um, and the idea is that way you don't get kind of burned out by seeing the uh, goals themselves over and over, and you aren't feeling like, oh yeah, I gotta do that, I meant to do that, blah blah blah, but rather you're just kind of inspired to, um, it's like, it's sort of like a subconscious thing, I guess, of like, subconsciously I probably could recall all the things that I had written down behind it, but not, you know, I'm not bombarded with it every day, and so I just really like that from sort of a, a different viewpoint, um, for vision boards that isn't purely based on the idea of sympathetic magic, which I don't always... Eh, I have my doubts about it, I guess. Like, I think it's cool, and I... But I feel like I would end up feeling a little empty because I'd feel, you know, like my my science brain... Not science. My fucking skeptic brain would keep coming in and saying, like, this is stupid. This is stupid. Eh. <coughs> So I sort of like this as a, um, as an, a sort of alternative, like, psychological model of vision board making. Anyway, so there's that. Um, at the end of the last year in November, I participated in this really awesome, um, zine making group called, uh, Zines Moriendi, and it's like making zines inspired by Ars Moriendi, which are basically, like, books of death, books of dying, like, 
the proper way to die, and they were sort of came about during the Black Plague era when there were so few, so many people dying, and so few priests give, to give them their proper rights that basically these uh, books with woodcut images for like the experience that someone is going to go through when they're dying and how you can properly prepare them for dying and prepare them for hopefully for heaven. Um, they were made both with writing and with just images to try and disseminate that information to um, common people who aren't necessarily priests who can then deal with death in their own environment. Um, and so this was sort of like making zines about um, death and how to die and that sort of thing that were inspired by Ars Moriendi. And uh, just the other day I got the a uh, little booklet where, you know, all the people that had participated in it, they sent their zines over, and then um, the organizers printed all of them and put them together, and so they sent them over in this cute little book. It's just like a little folded paper thing um, that you can wrap the this little skull around this tab. And then on the inside it has all the zines that people made. And so I've seen all the zines because we shared them at the end of the workshop. Um, but these are like actually printed. Like, look at this one. I really like this one. Art is long, life is short. It's the, uh, the Latin phrase. Um, and I, I just really like <laughs> all of these. Ah, they fell out a little bit. That's one thing. It's like, if it, it, it's a little hard to hold up, but we've got, like, Charm of the Hunky Punks, and we've got all of these... Oh, man, this one's so fucking cool. All of these zines that everybody made! <laughs> Tapophile! This one was really cool. Oh, man! So that's some of them, and... Um, here's some of them... Which side are we on? Yeah. Here's some of them. The Art of Dying... This one is mine! The Knowledge of Woof and Evil. <laughs> Yay! So these are really cool. Uh, oh yeah, I gotta I got show this one too. <laughs> Go mourn yourself. <laughs> Isn't that fucking awesome? So, um, one thing that I did do recently was I finally, finally finished actually arranging my zine to print on 8.5 by 11, because these zines that they sent us are printed on tabloid size paper, which is two 8.5 by 11s put together, so it's 11 by 17. And I have a home printer, and I frequently print at my library, which does not offer tabloid printing, so I wanted to arrange... I knew there was a way that I could arrange it... Um, so that I could print it on two 8.5 by 11 papers, but it meant that I had to rearrange the pages, and I had just never gotten around to that until, finally, I sat down and I did it the other day, and I'm really happy with how it turned out, and I forgot to bring over a copy of that. Give me one second. It's, like, over here. Okay. <laughs> Bean bags are hard to get out of. Okay. So right, so here is one um, of my finished zines. Now that was uh, stapled and put on uh, two eight and a half. Wait, one wait, one double sided eight and a half by eleven page because it's only eight pages. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'll just show it off. Well, and, you know, again, this is something that I've been meaning to. Okay, now I need to, like, print a few more of these. I need to put it on my site. I need to scan it for reading and blah, blah, blah. Which, again, I just, like, have not done that. But for right now, here it is. The Knowledge of Wolf and Evil. I am so, so proud of this, honestly. It's about werewolves, and it's about being trans, and I really love it. So, um, basically, <laughs> this is what the pages look like. There's and a uh, sort of comic illustration story that's happening of this werewolf that it's the the whole idea is that it's presenting um the state of being uh in this animal form of the werewolf being in this more animal form as being this i this sort of um 
freedom and enlightenment and happiness that then gets suppressed by the human side when they uh, when it is not the full moon, and that the act of dying and turning like your human side dying and turning into this werewolf is um, liberating and freeing in a way. Uh, so down below here, there's some text. I'll just uh, read it. It says. The werewolf is privileged to die every month to taste the sweet potion of animal's bliss and person's awareness. And then it has... I used uh, German words here because uh, the original Ars Moriendi was written in uh, in German in Constance. Here's the next page. Um, but he is cursed to return to life on daybreak to trade his heightened senses for the wool of the sheep. Cursed to crave the chance to die again, to wait until the full moon's return. And it's also got kind of a subtle trans message of, like, liberation from... The human body is also liberation from gender in a way, and so I had the figure be, uh, you know, a pro presumably a fab person who uses he/him pronouns. Um, yeah, and then the back here, this is just like the little cutout. I use like I I made line of cuts for these little guys that are holding the banners, which is sort of an old um, inspired by the traditional Ars Moriendi. So that's sort of also why I wanted to use German is because it sort of recalls the idea that a lot of the people who are reading the Ars Moriendis are illiterate and so they're focusing on the images and so this idea of having like these these words that you don't necessarily know what they mean but you can interpret the meaning based purely on the images. I thought that was a neat, a neat idea. And then the back here, <laughs> uh, I literally just copy and pasted from the Wikipedia on Ars Moriendi because I wanted to give people some context but I didn't want to like you know, take away from the from the images. And so I did all this. I drew this background um, and uh, edited So, like, I drew all these and edited them digitally. Kind of a combination of, like, ink drawings and stamps and cutout, and I'm just, like, super, super proud of this one. <laughs> Yay! Okay, and that's mostly all that I have. The last thing that I have are just, like, two little fun things to show off. One uh, is that I uh, found this place nearby that has used art supplies, and they ship anywhere. It's called Make and Mend, uh, which is really awesome. <laughs> so if you're looking for some interesting used art supplies at really, really cheap prices, then you should definitely check them out. And I went down, I got a few things, and I found this Hello Kitty at the Beach sketchbook, <laughs> which I totally had to fucking get. Oh my god, look at it! <laughs> and it was used by someone for like three pages or something that were ripped out, but the rest of it is all, you know, just like a nice clean sketchbook. It's got a pink ribbon. <laughs> I just had to get it. I just had to. Um, and then the last thing is that I've been drawing some characters for, um, thinking about trying to resurrect a comic idea that I had a while ago. Um, and so I have been drawing a bunch of these characters and just happy with how it's turned out and, um, trying to do like different styles of, of character design. And, um, again, it's just been really fun to draw something as opposed to just collaging. And I think that collaging has really improved my, helped, helped improve my drawing skills. And here's sort of the final design for one of the characters. <laughs> and I'm just like really happy with how she turned out. So I wanted to share her with you. Her name is Nova. And I really, I really like her. And I really like her eyes. And I really like this style. And I think that it's uh, interesting to look at, fun to draw, but it's also easily replicable for multiple panels. Alrighty. So that's everything. Kept it under an hour. That's a, that's an accomplishment. <laughs> so, um, anyway, happy to say hi to all of you again and show off some little things that I've been working on and maybe eventually some of them will be more, um, put together and like, you know, 
beautifully presentable instead of in a sort of a collection like this. But, you know, if not, I'm just, I'm honestly just pretty happy that I've still been doing stuff. <laughs> and I, I hope that you've been enjoying whatever you have been making or working on lately, um, even if it's not to be shared with other people. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.